Now, it can happen that you get uh, a repeated eigenvalue. Um, so an eigenvalue might, say, 3 might show up as an eigenvalue twice or something like that. Uh, we'll talk more about that kind of thing later. But for right now, we're going to look at what happens when you look at just distinct eigenvalues. And so there's a very useful theorem, theorem 510, which tells us that if the eigenvalues are distinct, then the eigenvectors are as well. Or more precisely, uh, distinct eigenvalues correspond to dis, uh, linearly independent eigenvectors. And later on we'll see that um, uh, in the case when the matrix, sorry, in the case when the um, uh, the transform, uh, the, the, the linear map, the operator, has uh, other properties, uh, namely when it's well related to its dual, then we'll see that the uh, eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are, in fact, orthogonal. Okay, so if we've got m distinct eigenvalues of the operator t, then the corresponding uh, eigenvectors are linearly independent. So the proof um, we'll do this by contradiction. So by way of contradiction, suppose that they are not independent. Then we have a dependence relation. So then um, there exists a VK, which is in the span of V1 through V k minus 1. And that was by 221, I believe. Okay. And we can choose um, k to be the, uh, the minimal index for which this happens, in which case we have that v1 through v k minus 1 is independent. So we take k to be the, the first instance where adding another vector would give us a dependent set. OK, so <clears throat> now um, let's see, since it's in the span, we have that vk looks like uh, a linear combination, j equals 1 to k minus 1, aj, vj, right? On the one hand, I can uh, apply t, and I get tvk equals t of the sum, which by linearity becomes uh, the sum aj tvj. OK. Um, on the other hand, let's see. Oh, and then uh, I can I can do something a little bit more with that because I know that the um, uh, these are all eigenvectors. So we get lambda k v k on the left, and then on the right we have some j equals one to k minus one. AJ, and then I'm going to replace TVJ with lambda J VJ. Okay. Meanwhile, back at our expression for VK, the other thing I could have done is just simply multiplied both of these by lambda K. So then lambda K VK is equal to 
j equals 1 to k minus 1, aj lambda k vj. So the only uh, difference between these two is that on this one we have lambda j, on this one we have lambda k, right? But on the uh, left side of the equation, these ones are exactly the same. So I can subtract these from each other and we get, let's see now, on the left side, uh, the two blue terms cancel, we have zero. And then on the right side, I can uh, factor out the common quantity of AJVJ. And we have lambda k minus lambda j uh, on each side. OK. And so now you notice this is a linear combination of the uh, Uh, this is a linear combination of the uh, v1 through vk, which we have chosen so that they are independent here. So then we know that all these coefficients have to be equal to 0. Um, and then we look at these and we say, okay, well, let's see. What's going to make it zero? It has to be one of those. Um, oh, oh, sorry. I didn't want to have the, the, the V in there. That one's okay. Gone. All right. Okay. So then if we're looking at this, we've got um, either this term in parentheses or the aj has to be equal to zero. But it can't be the term in parentheses because we're assuming all the lambda j's are distinct. So lambda k is not equal to any of the lambda j's. Actually, let me just write, since lambda k is not equal to lambda j, by our hypothesis about them being distinct, we have that aj has to equal 0 for all j. OK. Um, <clears throat> but then, let's see. What does that tell us about vk? Then vk has to be the 0 vector. But that's not allowed because vk is an eigenvector. So that's our contradiction right there. So we've got our contradiction, and we are done. We have a quick corollary to this. Corollary 513. So this is for a finite dimensional vector space v. Um, T in, uh, sorry, an, an operator T on a f dim, uh, vector space with dimension n has at most n distinct eigenvalues. Um, and so the proof is, is more or less immediate. If lambda 1 through uh, lambda m are distinct, then um, actually, let me, let me uh, back up and specify distinct eigenvalues of t, then their corresponding eigenvectors v1 through vm 
are independent. And then we have a theorem from way back at the beginning that says that um, you cannot have more linearly independent vectors than the dimension of the space. The end.